This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. It is the Awesome Cast, episode 373. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Ready to talk gadgets and get geeky with you guys today. I'm myself a video producer, podcaster, of course, here in the Pittsburgh area. And we got the crew with us today uh, assembled for this Avengers of Awesomeness. It is, first of all, from Studio C, John Chichilla, the gadget guru over a big bank international Esquire. I'm a huge fan of the Avengers reference. I think we should go with that every week. Well, between watching Thor recently and Katie's shirt, I, I was kind of inspired by it. So, uh, and and, and we, we fix things up here. And I love, like, I can see cars going by on your street now in your camera. So, like, we, we both have window access. It's pretty cool. So I'll have to set up a second camera just, just to do the, the external cam like you. Definitely. Um, we, that'd be great if you just like completely like keep upgrading your studio. <laughs> then we can just like have a show over there sometime. We could do, I could do, do 4K out the window. Not that everyone's going to see it because it'll probably just be 720. We still just push this out at 720. <laughs> so I don't know how much work that's going to be. Uh, so and also with us uh, in studio, she is the director of sales and marketing at the Scare House. <sighs> Social media guru, my my Padawan on social media. Or, no, I'm your Padawan on social media. <laughs> I'm, I mean, uh, Katie Dudas is joining us. I'll be your Yoda any day. You'll be my Yoda any day. <laughs> nice. <laughs> How are things going with you? Good. Fun, but good. Busy. But yes. I like it. Excellent. And back first time in the studio, we That's have a Bobby Cherry. He's a reporter for the Trib. He's all over the place. I am. I know, formally, like, swiftly, specifically, but uh, yeah, so but I'm, the local, everything. I'm the local news editor for a good portion of, of our Allegheny coverage area. So, nice. Yeah. Nice. So always like to get some some of the uh, old school news guys We're digital. On here. We're online. Yeah, you're digital. Actually, you don't even have a paper in Pittsburgh anymore. Well, the daily paper doesn't exist. Right, um, right. But we're on TribLive.com mm-hmm. and PittsburghTrib.com and then all of our weekly newspapers so let's just I, promoting I, everything i did come across trib live uh, like the studio out at the mills a couple of weeks ago oh yeah yeah that's out there yeah that's out there <laughs> yeah the, the, we are, we're all over the place yeah but of course i do all sorts of other things too mm-hmm. so including sharing christmas things uh on facebook just a little bit a little bit a little bit yeah. it should have uh, been an all christmas show <laughs> well that'll I, be that'll be upcoming that's what gold was. We were talking about Christmas trees and and things. And... I did bring a Santa hat. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> is your tree up yet? Yes. Mine is too. Yay! Yay. That's awesome. I'm still holding out to that weekend after yep. Thanksgiving. Still holding out. But anyways, uh, this is your awesome cast. This is where we talk about tech things from a Pittsburgh state of mind. You can check everything out at awesomecast.com. You can subscribe to the awesome cast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and the video versions on the Awesome Cast YouTube and Facebook page. You can also join us live on our Facebook or wherever else you like to get your streaming at. Uh, but the big chat is happening over on our Facebook page for Awesome Cast, including Maggie, Maggie S. out there, uh, Katie, uh, not this Katie, but uh, Brandon and a whole bunch of other people in there in the chat room hanging out with us. Thank you so much, everybody, for dropping by and being a part of this. Uh, you can also, uh, and of course, you're live uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday um, over on the, your streamers. Uh, and we're also available, of course, on YouTube and Periscope for Awesome Cast and, uh, and uh, the Sorgatron Media YouTube and Twitch channel as well. Uh, thank you to our streaming partners, uh, RiversEdgePGH.com, who, of course, have the new Metal Edge. We're going to be talking with uh, Zach from the Metal Edge on the Awesome Chat uh, Wednesday night. Go check out the event 
for that over on the Awesome Cast Facebook page. And uh, we're also uh, replayed on there Saturday mornings at 9 a.m., as well as the 405media.com, where they play us every morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, that'll be noon for you guys in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, so thank you ever, for two of streaming partners helping get the Awesome Cast out there to even more people. Um, also, thank you to our Patreon supporters. Like I said, we did some uh, Awesome Cast Gold talking about some pre-Christmas discussion with Bobby Cherry. Uh, Matt Weller at the $5 Coffee Club level is going to begin that. Uh, hit him up at Matt underscore Weller, one T on the Twitter. And our fan of the show uh, uh, level is uh, Mike Fedor, Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter. Thank you so much for supporting the show. You can also, uh, we, we have several levels, including a $10 level where you get things like the state of the show and uh, the $20 executive producer level where you get a credit on the show as well as we give you spiffy business cards after a couple months too. So if you want to participate in that and give to the show and help us literally keep the lights on here in the studio, in Sorgatron Media Studios, head over to patreon.com slash awesomecast. So let's get into our awesome things of the week bobby cherry you you have like three of them wait i love <laughs> you, you have like this one or this one or taylor swift with no link does it need a does that need it's a link? just just it just is <laughs> uh, it, which, which, which one are you you gonna pick here maybe we'll touch on a couple of them well i mean i don't know i the cards against humanity uh saves america is pretty funny um, I don't know if you saw that. They, I think they released it today. Mm-hmm. I, I, all I know is I purchased it today. But you know how they do those Christmas holiday season gift packs where you give them some money and they send you sometimes literally a bag of poop like they did a couple years back. Um, so they're doing it again. And this time it says that they're helping to save America. So I don't know what that means, but I can't wait to see what... Uh, is sent i think a couple years ago maybe two years ago i participated and i own like one tenth of an inch of space in maine they bought a ton of land (laughs) and so people who participated like got a got a piece of land in maine right it's enough enough to put like a maybe like a tiny little lego flag or something oh wow yeah it's it's very funny so hopefully i don't have to pay taxes on that but be like one cent every 10 years or something i don't know mm-hmm. but yeah do you have any any guesses on what this could be this year none they're pretty tight-lipped on it but it says you'll get six surprises in the mail next month and i mean it's based six. it's based on the uh current state of america so i can only imagine um what might be included in that and the instructions on here on the website say, give us $15, hurry, we'll frantically stuff envelopes, you'll get six surprises in the mail next month, America will be saved. And in fact, I see the uh, counter is up, or it was up just now, but when I did it this afternoon, it was at about 110,000 slots remaining, and I see there's just over 50,000 slots remaining, so it's definitely uh, been very popular this afternoon. I think they released it uh, this morning. Mm-hmm. So, oh, here it says on day one, all Cards Against Humanity Saves America recipients will get an illustrated map of the land, a certificate of our promise to fight the wall, some new cards, and a few other surprises. So apparently they've purchased more. Okay, they've purchased. Oh God, they've purchased more land somewhere. Apparently, along the wall with along the border with Mexico. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, their FAQs are phenomenal. <laughs> this is great so yeah it says you know cars against humanity stop the wall day one preview wow um so there you go if you want to uh, be part of that cars against humanity saves yeah, and typically they add the one of the neat things about this is they'll add um special cards with like your name on it or, or different things so that's why i always like these christmas holiday season packs because you know it'll be personal personalized cards that they send to you so i'm sure that that'll be part of this as well so i love that game awesome. if you haven't figured it out <laughs> awesome uh katie what is your awesome thing <laughs> oh jeez. 
<laughs> uh, so sometimes Facebook blocks things because of certain words and doesn't really actually do any research into the post. And they're just like, ah, flag, not selling this. So there was recently an artist who tried to post. She sells Christmas cards on her Facebook page. And um, she put a bird one up, a very pretty bird. And the bird's name is a Robin Redbreast because of the sexual and adult nature of the name. Uh, Facebook blocked her from selling it. Oh, uh, they said, oh my like, gosh. We don't allow the a sale of adult items or services. <laughs> so this lady's like 52 years old. She's like, uh, they blocked my Christmas cards from becoming a product in my shop because of the shameful sexual nature. <laughs> So now she's, uh, I'm sure she's on a lot more. <laughs> I, I was just going to say she'll probably sell a ton more mm-hmm. cards mm-hmm. now because of the popularity from the, the from Guardian, I guess. And I'm sure it'll get picked up everywhere else, too. Everybody mm-hmm. wants to get those sexy birds. Yeah. You know. <laughs> what, and I, I, I'm i reading, skimming through the article right now because I hadn't seen this before. Did they, <laughs> was it, I'm guessing this was something AI picked up on and mm-hmm. and this is why we don't let AI run the world. It's it, kind of like how I, I, I got a, a community guidelines thing on YouTube because I interviewed a wrestler named Super Hentai a couple <laughs> weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it, it's just so embarrassing to have to like, like repeal it and write type in. This is a this is the name of the person. We did not talk about sex. I swear. <laughs> and that's it. Just an interview. Guy in a mask. That's it. So anyways, uh, Chilla, what's your awesome thing? So my awesome thing, and I think I had this in the notes last week, and I was actually going to use it as my my awesome thing of the week, except for the the iPhone X came in in my hand. So Pixelmator Pro was announced uh, earlier this year from Apple um, as one of the. It's a made by a third party developer. It's not made by Apple themselves, um, but they were coming. They they announced that they were coming out with a new version. Um, later in the fall, that version is going to ship on November 29th. Um, why I'm excited about this is I'm I'm trying to go through and figure out where I really want to spend subscription money on, um, and Adobe isn't something I 100% need for the the minimal amount of work I do with it. So I started a while back. I started just using Pixelmator. Um, to try to get comfortable with it and move into that platform. And at a $30 one-time fee for Pixelmator, it got me most of the the stuff I needed. Pixelmator Pro is bringing, uh, getting rid of the old school floating window style um, and and making it look a little more modern. Um, And at an introductory rate of 59 bucks, um, that makes me pretty happy as a one-time fee. Um, So this is something that really excites me as I, I look to, like I said, reduce some of those subscription plans that I'm paying month over month on, and this will get me pretty much everything I need from a from a photo editing perspective. I think I, I heard them briefly talk about this on Mac Break Weekly as well, um, and I, I think their view is is stating, you know, Adobe's feeling the pinch a little bit as, as more people are potentially wanting to get out of the subscription market. Tools like this make kind of a perfect a perfect opportunity and option. I think it also decreases the barrier of entry for people that are looking to get into this type of field, um, and giving them a tool that's that's a little cheaper um, and not a subscription. I think is a good way to do that. Sounds good. Uh, you know, no, I think it definitely needs to be like more options like this, right? Um, because you know that subscription Adobe thing makes a lot of sense for businesses, but again. For individuals, yeah, like because like, you're just using it for personal use, right, Chilla? Yep. Yeah, I'm just using it for personal use, and you know, I'm, I'm I was using the photo option, and then I did. I honestly discontinued that. I have an old, old box copy <laughs> um, that that I'm still using from time to time. Um, very, very, even more and more rarely uh, mm-hmm. nowadays. Um, so. Uh, this will kind of push me over the edge and I'll actually probably go with it and uninstall this, un- uninstall my old box copy. Because when you think about it too, technically running the box copy on multiple computers is against the licensing agreement. Whereas this, um, what you can activate up to five Mac OS devices on your iTunes account. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're also building the, Pixelmator has a really nice uh, iPad app, and they're also building out the Pro app for that. So 
you have continuity capability across across the iPad as well as your your MacBook. Nice. So my awesome thing is a little more fun. Um, so I, I'm a big fighting game fan, and uh, there was a preview that just popped up recently um, from Injustice Two, which is the big superhero fighting game from the guys that did Mortal Kombat. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. I haven't picked up a new one yet. You know, I haven't really jumped on a lot of new games uh, with my Xbox One just yet. But then um, the preview came up, and of course there's Enchantress. Whoops, that's Chilla. Enchantress and uh, Adam are, are, are part of this fighter pack. But the biggest thing for me, of course, is they are adding the Ninja Turtles to Injustice. So the Ninja Turtles will be fighting alongside Batman and Superman and all the DC characters <laughs> that's awesome. in a fighting game, in like Mortal Kombat designed uh fighting game so i am really really excited about this one and uh, might have to pick up an uh, extended edition or whatever gets you the fighter packs for uh injustice too does this work too so do they keep and i was playing injustice even on my ipad a while back Mm -hmm. and i know injustice 2 launched for that do they keep them in sync as far as what characters are available or is this no, something that, that I, will only come to certain consoles or I just the consoles and not mobile i can't imagine them bring it to mobile um because even you know i went and went back and looked at what they have like there's there seems to be a lot of times a lot more characters on the mobile version to be honest okay um at least in comparison to the first one so uh, but i can't see i can't imagine because if they just drop the turtles on there okay i'm cool with the mobile version for the moment right but uh, but no, I I don't know. I you know I I, I wouldn't expect it. I, I I think is the big thing there. So, um, but it's really weird because I went back to even like WWE Immortals because another realm also does that uh, on the phone, and there's still like new versions of characters popping up there that that uh, uh you know that they've had. So, so a fun uh, game thing to to check that out too. Uh, um- yeah, now I'm going to have to make the decision of, of picking up Injustice 2 or picking up Marvel vs. Capcom. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a they're, I think they're about to release a new pack, too, with some some new characters. Mm-hmm. That gets addicting after a while. Yeah. Uh, Bobby, you had a second awesome thing. Okay. The, the first awesome thing that wasn't Taylor Swift. Oh, the Mario I, movie. I definitely yeah. want to mention that. <laughs> yeah. I uh I don't really know much about it because I didn't really read it. Okay. Um, but I know <laughs> <laughs> anything with Mario in the headline. Someone sent it to me today and was like, "You would love this." So there's a new Mario movie apparently coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't even know when the last movie. I think it was 1993. Apparently, um, the one with John Luguova Luguini. Yes. What's his face? And uh, like and, and yeah, yeah. That, and uh, Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. And so this one, I guess, is going to be um, coming out, I guess, 2019. So maybe? I do like this. So it's by, um, it, it, they made a deal with Illumination Entertainment. So, and that's the studio behind things like Despicable Me, mm-hmm. uh, Sing, The Secret Life of Pets. So that makes sense. Right. That you do a CG Mario at right. this point, right? And it's, yeah, it's a, it's a name that people know. So it's destined to at least look good, mm-hmm. you know, better than. I think the last couple Mario movies that I still own. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think that's the right thing. And, and I haven't seen Secret Life of Pets, Despicable Me movies, like our, our top quality. So I haven't seen them really kind of whiff on anything. I, don't, I haven't seen Sing, but it looked fine. So this story that, that I shared doesn't list a date, but I thought I saw 2019 somewhere, but that could have been mm. fake news. Well, if they just started, it's a CG movie. It's going to be at least three Probably, years. Yeah. Yeah. So, looking forward to that. Definitely. We'll still be in the Switch at that point. Yeah, so that's exactly, good. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then you can watch it on there. Oh, so, that'd be awesome. But it'd be cool to see if them do, like, even the same thing with the Zelda movie, I feel, at this point. Would be okay. Yeah, I think so, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I'd want Zelda to be a live action. I think mm. that would make a better live action than animation. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but then who plays Link in Zelda? And then which version of Lincoln's on right. Is it something new? You know, what do you get out of it? Is Link two feet tall? Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> is he an elf elf? <laughs> right. You know? Is that like Lord of the Rings in the long run? Right, right. So, it'll be interesting to see. So keep an eye out for that. Oh, the uh, the fire trucks are going by. <laughs> but uh, in, uh, I want to give a shout out to our friends, Slice on Broadway, uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Or tonight we got cheese pizza. 
to for accommodate me, for for, for Bobby. Uh, <laughs> so you. Uh, you know, again, right up the the way here in Beachview, a Beachview original now with four locations in Carnegie, PA, down on Main Street, as well as PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and their new location. Uh, over on East Liberty, I uh, love going in there and talking about the uh, Survivor Series wrestling pay-per-view coming up here uh, with some of the staff in there. And uh, thank you to those guys supporting uh, this podcast venture for a good long time here. Please check them out, SliceOnBroadway.com. Tell them the awesome cast sent you. And uh, thank them for supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting. So uh, so we have a couple of submitted things. Oh, hey, I wanted to give a shout out because Alex Carr has actually had submitted and shared that uh, Injustice 2 uh, pack with the Ninja Turtles. So I want to give him credit for that as well. Um, there was another friend of the show, Andy Quayle, uh, Techberg, uh, shared a article about they're using drones to uh, fire chiefs are using drones to pre-plan for next big fires. Um, not so much like kind of more like big structure kind of situations too. So another kind of interesting way for uh, drones to be used in in the wild out there, uh, I thought was pretty cool. Pretty long article. We have it over on Facebook. Um, so it, you know, again, pretty cool to see these used in uh, some pretty practical purposes. So, um, and from that. Bobby, Bobby Cherry, I think you you were probably excited about this too. There's a guy. Somebody was doing an app to tell if your local McDonald's ice cream machine is down. I did see that somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Was that more of a of a slap in the face though to McDonald's? I don't know. I used to go to Dunkin' Donuts all the time for uh, their culottes, but my local Dunkin' the machine always ended up being down. So I stopped going. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it was kind of like a, well, the local McDonald's is always down. So this will tell you when it's up, but. And it's interesting. So if it's up, does it tell you if they're out of anything? Cause I had the same problem with Dunkin' Donuts and the coffee co or the coladas. <laughs> Cause I like the blue raspberry ones and they were always out of the blue raspberry syrup. So I'm like, I'm not even going, even if the machine's up, I can't get what I want. Yeah, can I, can I get like just an inventory um, <laughs> right. app of some sort with our Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> like yeah. Our supply has 11% left or something, you know. Exactly. <laughs> Go now. Go now or don't even bother, right? Um, but no, they so so Randy McLeod, uh, uh made an iPhone app called Ice Check that directs you to the nearest working McFlurry machine at a McDonald's. <laughs> So, uh, I, well, this is a problem, and and, uh, and and I don't know how they're reporting it or anything like that. But the app is available, and yes, it will give you. It's probably it's probably crowdsourced reports or something probably. like that. Uh, but you can definitely get it on the iPhone uh, right now. So that's a pretty pretty handy little uh, thing there. Um, holy crap! I just checked out some of you guys' stories. Uh, Bobby Cherry, you, <laughs> you, uh, what, what do you want to talk about out of the stories you uh, have here? I don't know what I put on here. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the one that's interesting is the eleven uh, percent of Americans think HTML <laughs> is a sexually transmitted disease. <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw that in uh, uh, Inside dot com. Who you've had Kim Lyons on before? Mm -hmm. uh, I know she's an editor for Inside dot com, and one of their uh their newsletters shared a story about that. But yeah, I mean, I don't know what that says about what people know or don't know about uh, it, what goes on in the internet. But. And, and HTML stands for hypertext markup language. It is the code that runs most of the internet. Right. Uh, the World Wide Web, what right. you see in your web browser, right? But apparently it is not what everyone thinks it is. No, no, no. <laughs> uh well, there's some other ones there's, there's some other ones in here um 23 percent and mp thought an mp3 was a star wars robot it's actually an audio file that most of you probably listen to the show on uh 18 percent identified identified blu-ray as a marine animal <gasps> wow 15 percent says they believe software is a uh, comfortable clothing what Ooh. and 12 percent said usb is an acronym for a european country oh my god <laughs> So like we're maybe they were asking like 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 senior homes or something like that like where people aren't. I'm terribly... looking. I think it said uh, two thousand three hundred ninety two people between eight uh, from ages eighteen and older. Yeah. So it was a really wide variety of people. Apparently, were interviewed. Mm -hmm. That's scary. 
And it was multiple choice. Right. right. They only gave him three possible <laughs> answers. I mean, they, they had a 33% chance of getting it right from the get-go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What would what would HTML stand for as an STD? And and that's where I'm wondering, like, what did they what did they what did they think it stood for? Right, right. <laughs> did you know that a gigabyte is an insect commonly found in South America? <laughs> it is <laughs> the motherboard is a deck of the cruise ship. Oh jeez. That was the article, the original article. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> 61% of the respondents said it's important to have a good knowledge of technology in this day of age. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad they're following through with that. Oh, my God. Jeez. Uh, Dutters, uh, what, what is uh, Pinterest Lens doing these days? Pinterest Lens. Uh, so now you're like, I don't know what to wear to work or where wherever I'm going. Uh, Pinterest Lens will tell you. So you are able to, I'm trying to find the article because I started pulling up all the funny things <laughs> on the internet. Um so essentially, you can either take a photo of what you have, like a blue sweater, and you're like, what goes with my blue sweater? And it'll search Pinterest boards to see what goes with your blue sweater. Who has time for that? You don't have a Pinterest board? And- oh, I have a million Pinterest boards. I want to vacation in all of the great places that I'll never see and build all of the great <laughs> Christmas things I'll never build. Oh, that sounds like fun. Is there a Pinterest fail for this? There's a Pinterest fail. I'm sure there are. <laughs> it goes right to the boards that are awful. <laughs> You're like, you should totally rock it with this. Uh, but yeah, so they'll tell you what you can wear and what looks good. And Who is they? Uh, Pinterest. The people at the Pinterest, which I think Pinterest is a... <laughs> I'm trying to think of what Pinterest, Pinterest is. is a robot. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it didn't say anything about Pinterest. Pinterest is a porcupine that... <laughs> 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 so the master porcupine will tell you what you wear with your sweater. <laughs> Because why not, right? At this point, why not? Apparently, they're they're introducing QR codes for Pinterest. Mm-hmm. I read in that story. I'm sure that'll go over very well. Oh, yeah. Begin a visual search when users zoom into a part of a pin, like the yeah. bag in the photo of an outfit. Pinterest, I, I, I've been so outside of Pinterest for so long yeah. at this point because I, I just haven't had a client that has had any interest in it. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I, I don't know what happens there anymore. I, you know, I went, tried to go into it yesterday looking for something for my Christmas tree. And... Um, I was on my iPhone, but it, it forced me to open the app to view whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And I deleted the app at least a year ago Mm -hmm. and I just ended up canceling it because I wasn't downloading the app just to see whatever it was. So. It drives me nuts because I'll find something online and I'll be like, let me just look at this online. Right. No, nope, you want to use the app. I'm like, I don't have the app. Please stop <laughs> telling me to use the app. Exactly. Like the web page that works, should work just as fine. Mm-hmm. Here's a question. How does that work if somebody's colorblind? Well, should, well shouldn't it help? Well, yeah, yeah. shouldn't it help them? Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Would, it, would it help them? Because would it show things based on that color? As long as no, you... but it's going to tell them what to wear. It's not going to tell them, hey, you're wearing green and, green and blue. It's going to tell them, hey, take this outfit. True. Right? So if you're colorblind, you could take like the picture to the store you know, I'm envisioning someone going to like Macy's with the with the Pinterest picture and saying, "This is what I want." You okay. Know? Or I mean, I, I I imagine it's it's taking you to things that you can purchase on Pinterest, right? Well, probably as it is. Yeah. So you just click on that thing. I mean, I think it would direct you to that color as well. Okay, because that, that's the part that I wasn't entirely understanding. Maybe I wasn't listening to you. I'll admit that. No, I think we inferred that. Um. <laughs> Wow. Chilla, chilla. <laughs> what is this about Quantum's not just for Comcast anymore? What is, what is, is, is Quantum the, the gigabyte uh, situation over there? No, not Quantum. So Quantum is the new version of Firefox mm-hmm. um, that launched today. I am not a huge fan of Chrome. I, I apologize. So oh, I'm, no. I'm, what? I, I'm always looking for a different browser that's not Chrome and not IE on my Windows machines, which pretty much leaves me with Firefox or something random like Opera. Um, so Firefox has been promising this new lightweight, high-speed version, um, and it launched today in Firefox 57. Its name is Quantum. Um they started building this about six months ago. Um, so I'm excited to try this out. Um, 
I just I just loaded it on three machines, um, and I'll be trying to, to to use this as much as possible over the next couple of days, um, hoping that it that is that is just as nice. And I'm people are going to laugh at me. I'm a huge fan of Safari primarily because of the bookmark sync and the way it organizes bookmarks, which is something I also like about. Um, Firefox, I like their layout of, of bookmark and, and sync features. Um, so this is something that you can also download on your devices and take your sync bookmarks with you. They have a really nice way to export bookmarks as well. Um, so I'll be giving this a, a spin, but and, and hopefully it'll let me re replace a Chrome on a lot of devices because I've actually been unhappy with Firefox recently mm -hmm. um, on some of on some of my older machines, and hopefully this will breathe new life into that. Well, good to see them moving forward. I'm sorry about your Chrome hatred. It's because <laughs> you use because it's, it's so resource intensive, isn't it? Well, no, so, so it's two things. It's the resource intensiveness, but I can't. I, I really like that they they spent some time and and tried to redo the way they do bookmarks mm -hmm. with kind of like a plugin directly from Google. And then they added it into the browser for a while. And I really liked that new layout of their bookmarks and I was ready to come back. But that's the, that's the thing that aggravates me more than, than the, than the resource intensiveness is how they handle their bookmark organization. Hmm. I like, it syncs really well across, but I, I just don't, I'm not a fan of their bookmarking. Yeah. I, I, I rely on bookmarks a lot. And thankfully I'm not, I'm not as much in that world. I my, my bookmarks are a mess. There's probably stuff that's been in there for 10 years. Oh, Cause I've been on that platform far too long. Um, so I think this only applies to Chilla right now and a couple of you guys out there. Uh, but, but Chilla, uh, according to uh, the verge over here, there is a new iPhone X 10, sorry, notch remover of it now available in the app store for 99 cents. You too can remove the notch at the top of your iPhone 10 that you paid over a thousand dollars for. Is it like a wallpaper creator? I think so, or something. But it basically blacks out the entire um, top of the phone, so it blends in with the black notch. I'm get so it'd be interesting what happens when you because they're only showing wallpapers on that from what it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, which that's funny because I was looking for something along the same lines that would help me reframe and resize some of my existing wallpapers that I really liked. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I would urge people to do is look for templates that do this because they're free. Um, and, and there's, there's a lot of people looking for these same types of things. Um, but the, but the thing is that it's so, so yeah, it's probably doing that, but it, it's, it's really just, it, it, it's really, yeah, it is. It's just, um, um, puts a puts a, a top of the it, it is just a, adjusting your, your wallpaper basically so yep. it doesn't apply if you're in another app correct so. now most of the apps that i have seen are uh, and some of them are sticking with that white look um my wallpaper was actually gradiated or had a gradient that went black to the top so um it, i didn't notice it as much on my wallpaper where, where i'm normally at mm -hmm. And then in any app that has kind of a dark background, I use the dark, I use the dark um, theme kind of on Twitter. So I really don't notice notice the the, the notch as much on on Twitter and whatnot. So I, I don't know. I guess uh, I, I guess I, I've just gotten so used to it. I will say that they've also added in, in beta. There's some some there's a hovering line up there much like at the bottom of the mm -hmm. screen in the upper right so if you think you're getting away with that you're they're probably i'm guessing you're going to see more ui elements pop up in those corners um that's going to just going to continue to draw attention up there mm -hmm. um so from uh, bobby yes <laughs> bobby cherry <laughs> you you okay over there yes we're yeah good. yeah um there was an article by uh the triv that you shared about the what ups is doing yeah, this um, is interesting. Delivery on a bike in yes. downtown Pittsburgh. In downtown Pittsburgh, which is pretty crazy. I guess it happened somewhere else in the country, probably Portland. I'm sure, um, but I don't know. I think that's it, the the story. Another story I read that linked to the Trib story said 
that if it can happen, if it can work successfully in Pittsburgh, chances are it can be rolled out anywhere. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I think that's true. I, I don't know. If, I mean, you figure with Amazon and other places trying to offer more speedy delivery. Oh, how about that? Um, nobody got that. Wah, wah. Oh. Um, you know, so it's a Mr. Rogers reference, guys. <laughs> I, I think it's it's neat to see, you know, a, a different way of trying to accomplish accomplish that. So mm-hmm. I guess you're. Yeah, there's the device right there. How cool would that be to see, you know, on a bike lane or somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, get the, the, some use of those bike lanes. And, and the biggest thing is it's not blocking as much because. I mean, we've been downtown where there's like a big UPS truck just double parked somewhere yes, to deliver the a package, time. and and, it, and it's a big it's a big problem. Yes. Plus, you know, between some of the smaller alleyways and things like that back there, like this thing can just kind of roll down those. And I'm even thinking some of the smaller towns around Swickley, uh, around Pittsburgh, like a Swickley or Aspenwall or Carnegie, where a lot of the businesses end up getting lots of deliveries. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be great because in those small towns, the delivery drivers do the same thing that you just described. They block you know, two parking spaces or the bus stop, you know, and they pull out a cart and they deliver the entire business district's worth of deliveries while they're still blocking everything else. This way the driver could park the vehicle somewhere and then, you know, or however it would work and and pedal around to the different places. But I think it's a neat way and it's environmentally safe too. I mean, they're not, the the vehicle Mm -hmm. isn't idling, um, you know, and, and all of that. So the only sad part is they unveiled this just in time for winter months in Pittsburgh. That's true. But I do, you know, it's funny you say that. I do see a lot of people riding the the healthy ride um, bicycles in the winter. And and I don't know. I can't even walk in snow in the winter. Mm-hmm. So, but. They'll have some snow tires. I'm sure. Here's Here's my question. I imagine this thing going up like the south side slopes <laughs> oh. in the snow. Nope. And by going up, I mean not really. <laughs> nope. Nope. And then there goes like your entire box of like whatever Fiesta wear or some kind yeah, of this like. This thing is going to tip yeah, over on thing. some of those yeah. hills. Jeez. Well, <laughs> I, I, that's not safe going there goes, up there. There goes all your Christmas gifts backwards down the hill. Which I, I guess is why they, they've determined that if this can actually work in Pittsburgh, they can launch it anywhere right <laughs> right well uh we'll, we'll see we'll see if we you know we get a lot of cool things here it's one last thing that brought block the uh the robo cars that uber and everybody else is uh rolling out here in the pittsburgh area mm-hmm. so you know if it works out that, that, that'll be pretty cool mm-hmm. you know hey good for ups to be a, a company innovating on something like this so uh, um dutters Mm-hmm. Tell me about this Reddit robot situation. Ah, it's so cute, uh, <laughs> Cosmo. So okay, you there's a, there's a cute video and everything, um, but there was it happened on Reddit. It was earlier today. Mm-hmm. Essentially, these little teeny robots named Cosmo um, did his little escape room puzzles in the little teeny world in Reddit. Um, one of the rooms the redditors could go into was like a meme room mm-hmm. where they could go through different memes and like they're just trying to solve puzzles. And um, I missed this. I wish I would have saw it earlier, but you could have actually interacted with them live. And there's a, there's a good picture if you go part of the way down where you see a gentleman on, or it looks like maybe a lady or gentleman on a ladder. And you can see how tiny the world is that they created for these little oh, teeny no. Oh, that's awesome. It's a little miniature escape room. It's for miniature robots. But it was just kind of like introducing the world to these little Cosmo robots. There's a, there's a fun little video at the bottom. It's like with the little guy. So he's cute. Oh geez, yeah. So here's the one with the guy on the ladder, and you can kind of see the scale. Oh wow! Versus the the room that they were in, mm-hmm. and, and this is by Anki Anki, mm-hmm. who I I also have in here. Like they're the ones that do the um the racers. Yeah. So um they, they've been really kind of like moving forward in these kinds of toys. I want one. I know. So adorable. Yeah. And they were talking about how the little robot will um, likes to fist bump. In celebration. Oh, <laughs> like, that's they, awesome. They, they kind of did a wrap up. It, was, it looked like it was like a sports wrap up. It was really cute at the end. Although it looks kind of like a blend between Wally and Eve. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I was just going to ask, is, <laughs> this, is this how we're actually getting Wally? <laughs> yes. 
Yep. Cosmo fell into the internet. That's awesome. And if I start playing a song from Hello Dolly, I might wonder what's happening. I, I had also shared because, I mean, you know, I've heard about these for a while. Like, all the geek shows have kind of, you know, around Christmas, they're like, oh, there's this cool, like, racetrack system and, and Cosmo ro- robots I think we've seen before as well at, like, CES or something, right? Mm-hmm. But, look, like, they're playing games and, and doing some fun things like that. Um, so, you know, and that, that's because the other thing I saw, I'm watching WWE Raw last night. And their their Anki um, uh, racetrack has a Fast and the Fur- Furious edition now. Cute. Oh wow! And it's you know you're on the phone and you're controlling it, and it's like the old slot cars except it's digital, right? And you can build the tracks and everything like that. Um, so it's kind of these interesting, fun little. <laughs> there's a video of like a dog eating it <laughs> for some reason here. Where was it? I want to get that dog eating it. There we go. And then if your dog's gonna like take peanut butter, is there peanut, peanut butter, butter on top of it? Yeah, reason. of course it'll eat it then. So that's awesome. So so they did this on Reddit. Yes. It, and it was kind of. Do you remember when the? Well, I can't remember if it was on Twitch or where it was, but someone did a thing with that with Pokemon like this, where mm-hmm. they they plugged a, like an IRC chat room or something into into Pokemon, where you could go in and control. It was everyone simultaneously. The equivalent of button mashing, but <laughs> um, but it, but it, yeah, it was a, it was like a crowdsource or not. I don't know what you. It wouldn't be MMO. I don't even know what you would consider it. But everyone could contribute. Definitely, um, awesome. So, um, Chilla, tell me, tell me about bots versus email scammers. So, so this is something I, I don't know if we played the video on the show probably about a month ago of the. The guy who built the callback system that was re- redialing and calling back a lot of the phone scammers. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is actually a bot that will you can hand over um, scam scam email. <laughs> um, you can take anything any any email you get, and I actually want to try this out. Mm-hmm. Um, you can forward the email to me at rescam.org. <laughs> And it will proxy. It will become a proxy email address for you, and start replying to the scammer's email on your behalf, <laughs> <laughs> and and pretty much just keep the conversation going indefinitely. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, and and this is where I, I saw that there was some guy that that kind of hacked together a, a hodgepodge of uh, of phone system to to call back. Like I said, one of those phone scammers, and it, it, they were flooding. The phone scammers phone lines um with a pre-built recording um so it just pretty much crashed the, the phone scammer and hopefully we can do the same type of thing i love this um, one email that's on here hello i'm not even sure i read that right you type pretty small and my eyes aren't so good are you talking <laughs> about real money because if so then certainly have my attention <laughs> so what, what do you need to me I just have to read your emails. I can do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, listen, yeah, we talked about like a like a phone version of this, right? Before you said, yeah, I think I, I can't remember if we had it on the show or not. But I, there, there's a guy that did the same thing, kind of as a phone phone version. He would actually, if he could get the phone numbers for people that were were phone scamming, especially the elderly, trying to extort money from them. Um, I don't know if you've ever gotten that phone call that there's a warrant out for your arrest, and if you merely pay them three thousand dollars in Target gift cards, they'll they'll happy to be happy to. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a, there's a lot of those ones where mm-hmm. like they they they're you get a phone call and they they they're trying to extort money, but the way they extort money from you is they take it in like Target See, gift cards. I haven't and, gone that. So we we've been getting those because one of those like uh, there's a horrible tax matter and there's a warrant out for you and the call is from like washington state and but I, is is that what they're going to end up getting to more than likely i would guess oh, and, and i've i've actually seen people at work just laughably keep those people on the phone for mm-hmm. for as long as possible i just never just to- i never want to answer my phone at all because i'm afraid i'm gonna get one of those they get marked as somebody that is like actually a real person that answers your phone, mm-hmm. yeah. and then you just get more of them. Yep, that's my concern. You're, yeah. So, so, and there's an there's an app. If you, I mean, if you get a chance, check it out. It's called um, UMail, and it's a voicemail voicemail replacement system. It's the voicemail I actually use instead of using AT and T's voicemail. Mm-hmm. Um, but they actually have 
um, they keep track of spam lists and a bunch of other things. So they, they'll actually auto divert the phone call from you um, and, and send you a text or let you know, Hey, there was potential scam, but they did ac actually leave a voicemail and you can go in and listen to it. Mm -hmm. um, just to make sure it wasn't a scam, but that, that's one thing that I've been trying to do. Cause then you don't even get the phone call. You can also obviously block a lot of those numbers, but they're, they're getting pretty good. Like I'm getting phone numbers that have the same, same area code and same three digits of the phone number is my phone number. Yes. Um, and it's, and it's scam yep. mm -hmm. junk call. Blocked yep. one of those today. Yeah, but yeah, throw them on the block list and mm -hmm. scam list on your, on your phone and mm -hmm. hope <laughs> basically. Um, uh, one last thing for today. Uh, so we, I, I've been liking that a lot of these, um, a lot of these companies are announcing kind of standalone VR headsets and HTC just joined, uh, joined that group today by announcing a HTC 5 Focus, um, their standalone VR headset with world-scale tracking. Now, Vive is always interesting because you put up a couple cameras and you can kind of, um, you have a space that you can move around in, right? And they're going to be doing this as a standalone kind of situation. There's no pricing on this yet. They're talking about how, you know, Vive games, it takes them, it took developers like three hours to uh, uh, port them over to this new device. Um, and it's, it's going to be, it's going to be on Qualcomm Snapdragon, uh, hardware, uh, which is some high end stuff on the phone side. Um, so, you know, no release date, no, no pricing or anything like that. But I think this is really the next step for this to become kind of more accessible than your gear VR situation or having to get a $1,500 PC and, another $800 headset and everything like that. So it'll be interesting to see kind of where it moves into this. So I just want to kind of put an awareness out for that to see, you know, hey, you know, there's another one. Oculus has been talking about their standalone one. I think they unveiled some prototypes at um, the last Facebook uh, event and, uh, and, and and everybody's working on this kind of stuff. Uh, Google, of course, with their Daydream. Um, what well, Actually, that was phone-based, wasn't it? So, um, Chilla? I'm, I'm definitely interested to see where this is going. I where this goes and i'm i'm excited for this because i i feel like the vr was a cool party trick mm -hmm. and you could or or it's only useful to the single person where if you can get a group of people with headsets in the same room playing some of the games can be pretty fun and that's one um, of the big things with this too because they're saying that you can you can link the, the the vibes to other headsets including the if you have one of the original vibes uh for okay. more, more social experience like that too yeah so so and i think that's where it would be even uh, even better right mm -hmm. i mean I, i'm guessing most people don't have multiple high-end phones and multiple headsets or multiple um gaming rigs hooked up to multiple headsets at their house so i i feel like if they can get the price down um and get some decent games on there i think you're gonna see it, it, it i'm hoping it gets to the point where you you, you no longer buy a, a video gaming system with one controller right because if you have friends over no one else can play or you're passing back and forth the controller i feel like that's the next step is to how do you get multiple people in the room playing mm-hmm Certainly. And, and, and does that become a bit of reality or, or where do we go there? I, I think there's a lot of interesting experiments that are going to happen before we kind of settle into something. So, and, and I think it's a good thing because we're kind of with our Xbox One X's coming out and everything. I think we're hitting the top end of what game consoles can do. Hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. it, it feels like they're kind of maxed out at this really? point. Uh, I mean, you know, other than just making the visuals prettier. Really, you know, I, higher resolution, that kind of yeah, I yeah, agree. yeah. That, that's about it, you know. Hey, buy this newer thing because it works on your 4K TV with limited stuff. Yeah. You know, I saw someone today shared a picture of themselves. They they put their face on a bunch of I don't know what football NFL game and I don't know what system. Yeah, yeah. But they put their face on their team's players, so the entire team was I guess just a just a bunch of their own faces. It's kind of weird. <laughs> That's a little odd. Um, <laughs> it, it was funny. Somebody saying uh, on one of the, I think it was on Twitter or something. It's like, yeah, I play Madden in 4K because I can't watch football in 4K because they don't provide it yet. <laughs> so, wow. you know, which is weird because then you got that weird. You were talking about like the Uncanny Valley because, you know, 
video game people are only so good looking. Uh, you know, uh, uh, video game Kevin Spacey was still creepy, you know, even though it looked kind of like Kevin Spacey, right? So, really bad example topical wise, I realize. Now I think about it. <laughs> but that's the only other one I could think of that was like in a game like that. So, um, I really hope that patch is for real that turns them into Tom Hanks in Call of Duty. But, uh, anyways, but on that note, Bobby Cherry. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having and me. And talking awesome things with us. I enjoy sitting here watching the, the trolleys go by. There you go. So, yeah. There you go. Uh, tell people where they can find what you're working on. Uh, go Bobbo. Twitter. I That's sort of my home base right now. Mm-hmm. So just look me up there. Follow me. Follow me. I want all the followers. And of course, your writings are over on the trip. Yeah, you can find me mostly editing on the trip, but I write still there as well. Um, but yeah, Twitter is the place where I share lots of things. And apparently, according to you, Sorg, I am the the face of, I guess, a lot of news, the news cycle. He's been like my news source lately. Like real news that I actually give a crap about <laughs> comes from his <laughs> Facebook posts. Um, I, I just I just noticed in the last few weeks, like, like you just, I don't, because you put the stuff out there and people are reacting to it. And you're, you're 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 drawing out really good conversations. I try. I mean, I have a variety of friends who have all sorts of backgrounds and political beliefs and all sorts of whatevers. Mm. And usually, on a news story, I don't usually post a comment, or I'll just share a quote from the story the way we do on our news Facebook pages. Um, but it is interesting to see the the commentary that happens. I usually don't read the comments because I'm afraid of what's happening unless someone especially, texts me. especially with politics right exactly unless someone texts me and says you might want to check out these comments or did you see what so-and-so said then i have to go down through and message them and be like can you cool off like i'm friends with these people so <laughs> i'm sorry i'm seeing comments going on over here <laughs> oh, i didn't God. know if we wanted to bring up that story or not but <laughs> um like katie she's uh recovering from scarehouse season yes and I don't know, what are you doing? Otherwise, <laughs> is there still Scarehouse Weeklies or anything? No, not Scarehouse Weeklies. Now it's like looking over the data, figuring out stuff for next mm-hmm. year. I thought you were going to say looking over the dead. The dead. I like to look at the dead. I'm sure there's probably... <laughs> I'm sure that'll be All part the people of that were trampled in the, in, the, in the haunt. Yes, wished them down. <laughs> and then we used them as props. <laughs> it happens every year. <laughs> Sorry, I'm catching up on the comments too. Where are these comments? I'm afraid. In the in dock. In the dock. Don't worry, they're in the dock. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I, I decided I didn't want it to be that kind of show. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> and uh, John Chichilla, he's chillatech.net, chilla on the Twitters. That's where you can find me, John Chichilla on the Facebooks. And of course, uh, producer Missy is here as well. Oh. How you want to plug anything? Small Business Saturday. Yay! Yay. Come to Beachview. Come we'll be doing Beachview. stuff We're here. Doing stuff, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be doing stuff. We're going to have a social media scavenger hunt and some live bands. <laughs> yes. So. <laughs> and. Bobby found the dock. Oh, you found the dock. Oh. <laughs> yes. Um. <laughs> anyway, yes. So come to Beach for your first Small Business Saturday. There you go. And even before that, this Thursday, if you're available, we are doing our bragging about Beach View with La Katrina. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be some awesome, 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 authentic Mexican food. And one of our new restaurants here. It's great. Excellent. And of course, please check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. A lot of great podcasts. Some coming back, like Panel Ride came back this week with a new format and some more uh, scheduled to come back here in December. And uh, new stuff working out all the time, including Rap Gamers with our friends at Sofo Digital um, online as well. Uh, thank you, everybody in the chat room that have been joining us. Uh, <laughs> you have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.